Hey guys, Russ here with bishopswest.com. Today I wanted to go over a gated reverb effect in Cakewalk, uh, kind of how to set it up, and then maybe take it a, a little bit further, kind of to an extreme. Um, if you don't know what a gated reverb is, basically it's traditionally been used on snare since like the 80s in Phil Collins, where you put a big, huge reverb on a snare, but instead of letting it ring all the way out and, and um, die off naturally, you put a gate on it so that at the end of it, it just suddenly cuts off. Um, so it shortens up the sound of the snare quite a bit so it doesn't drown everything else out, but still gets that nice, huge, big reverb sound in it. So to start with in Cakewalk, um, I've just got this track here with the basic snare. This is what it sounds like. Pretty basic. So what I've done is, first of all, I added this aux track here. Um, if you don't know how to do that, just insert send a new aux track. And on this aux track, the first thing I did was I added a reverb. So I'm just sticking to the stock plugins here. Um, Sonitis reverb. And for presets, I just chose this large hall. So let's listen to that without the gate on it. Oops, without that muted. Huge, right? But also kind of overwhelming. So then the next thing I did was I added this gate. Um, now the trick with this is instead of just letting it die naturally, you can actually use um, side chaining. So I added another send up here and for the um, assignment I assigned it to the side chain in down here Sinus gate side input aux one. And what that does is that means that this is going to be listening for that original sound instead of the the reverb that we have on it. Okay. So in other words right now this snare sound is going to go through the reverb and the gate without that side chaining will um, just listen for that reverb to hit a certain minimum before it starts cutting it off. <clears throat> Instead, what we're going to do is adjust um, the gate here so it listens for the actual snare sound. So this is what it sounds like now. Okay. So let's disable this and now let's see what it sounds like. Did you hear the difference? It goes for quite a bit longer because it's listening for a minimum, the 60 decibel minimum threshold on the actual reverb. But now it dies out with the sound of the snare instead. Okay. So that's how you would use that on a snare. Like I said earlier though, I wanted to um, take it kind of a different direction. I was inspired by um, something I read in Computer Music Magazine recently where the producer, I don't remember who it was, wanted the sound of one of his synth sounds to cut through the mix without being drenched in reverb, but still have the feel of the reverb afterwards. So he was kind of doing the same thing so what I've done is, got my Zeta plus two here. here. Let's mute that first, just so you can hear it. All it is is a basic sine wave, and then I just added a little bit of distortion on it. Oops. Aha. Let me get that volume back up. So very dry, no effects whatsoever, except like I said, for the distortion. So what I've done is, same thing, I created an aux track and um, added a reverb. It's the same thing, that large hall reverb. And traditionally, I think what you would want to do is use just a compressor. And so you can see, 
I've got the threshold way down at the bottom, ratio set to infinity to one, um, and the knee set to a hard. But same thing, it's listening to a side chain from that um, synth. And so if I unmute this, if you listen carefully, you'll hear that as long as I'm pressing the key for the synth, all you'll hear is the sound from the synth. But once I let go, you'll hear the reverb trailing off. So, right? Um, should be pretty clear. So you don't hear any of that reverb until the end. So I think this is a way that would work for pretty much any DAW. Um, I just happen to be using it here in Cakewalk. Um, but let's close that. And I wanted to show you kind of the cool thing about Cakewalk's gate is if you go to presets, you'll see that they've got this synth anti-compressor. And what it's doing is basically the same thing as we had that compressor doing. Same thing, I've got a send set up going to the side chain here. So if you listen, right, it doesn't let the gate go until um, I finish playing that note on the on coming through the synth. And to me, this sounds actually a little bit better than, than the compressor. Uh, I guess it's up to personal taste, but I just wanted to show you that either one is available. You can kind of adjust the release here. You can make that quite a bit shorter so it dies out or lengthen it. And you can hear it goes for quite a bit longer. Um, somewhere around 400, 420 seems to work just fine. Okay, and so now when you play, right, it doesn't get all drenched in the reverb. It's very upfront and in your face, but later on you get the feel of the reverb following on. Um, so yeah, just something for you to play with, have fun with, experiment with, see what you come up with. Hope this has helped and have a great day.